It's January, and in January, one's thoughts often go to organizing. As creative people, one of the things that we can find very difficult to organize are our ideas, our creative ideas. Well, today I have for you a fantastic piece of software that you can use on any of your devices to organize not just your creative ideas, but any ideas that come your way in your life. I'm talking about Evernote. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So the cool thing about Evernote is that its symbol is an elephant. You know, as in elephants never forget. The most basic thing in Evernote is the note. Here I have a note that I made that is just a photo of a piece of jewelry I found online and I titled it Pretty Ideas for a Dragon Wing. Notes can consist of a lot more than just photos and words, but I'll tell you more about that in a bit. If you want, you can type in words add notes to yourself about why you have that particular picture there in that note. And you can do a lot of the different text editing that you can in programs like Microsoft Word. If you take a look up here, you'll notice that it says Dragon Ideas. That is because this is one of many notes in a notebook called Dragon Ideas. Let's take a look over here. And you can see here's Dragon Ideas. And in there I have, I think, two dozen notes. I'll move this out of the way so you can see them all. These are a whole bunch of things that I collected back in 2015 when I was making a dragon every week. And I had to have an idea to start from. And sometimes it's just an idea, just some words, some thoughts that came to me in a note. Something just sparked an idea for a technique. Now, if you'll notice, Dragon Ideas is one notebook full of 24 notes in a stack of other notebooks. That's what it's called, is a stack. So each of these notes, like I said, it's like a, you know, picture a spiral bound notebook. And it's got two dozen pages. But you can have notebooks for all kinds of things, as you see I do. Here's a notebook, paper crafts. I don't have many because I don't do a lot these days. Or one, that wire and metal ideas. Things, Mostly things I haven't been able to get to, but I'd like to. And so I collect the ideas so that if I ever do get into it, I won't have that dreaded blank canvas syndrome. I'll have lots of ideas to jump from. So this is all in a stack of notebooks called crafting. And that is how Evernote is organized. Notes that are within notebooks that are within stacks. Now here's a very basic stack of notebooks called video ideas. I make two videos every week for my YouTube channel. I make two, three or four videos every month for my patrons. So I really need to have ideas on hand so that whenever I need to make a video, I can just take a look and see what there is to choose from. And you can see there's three types. There's three notebooks, clay videos, Friday findings, jewelry findings. And here's, here's Evernote Inception because this is the note that I made my notes on for doing this video. I had planned for some time to make you a video on how to use Evernote. Here's one I mentioned in a recent video that I'm going to show how to make a veneer of cane slices and an example. So let's go on over to one of my favorite notebooks, Polymer Clay Play Ideas. I don't get to use this as often as I like, as evidenced by the number of notes that are in there. But this is just so that when I have uh, some time to work on something. I will have a ready list of ideas or inspiration. I was working on a granny doll and I decided to put her on a mushroom. And whenever I came across something, usually online, I would take a picture of it and add it to this notebook. And so here you can see I've got all kinds of things with Nothing that I want to copy so much as just details like the idea to give her a laced up corset 
was from this but I didn't copy it I just said oh that's a good idea or give her a stick or set her on a mushroom kneeling with her arms like that just details that interested me that I thought I might add to the sculpture some of these things didn't get used and and some of them did like this one I liked her glasses and so my granny ended up getting wireframe glasses I didn't copy these I just liked the idea of using glasses so these were my inspirations for just different things I thought I might put a flower in her head but I didn't end up doing that so this is just a wonderful repository for ideas like I took this class from Ivy Niles and her PCA's 2017 and I really like that screenshot of one way she used the canes that she taught in the class. This is another class from the PCA 2017 that I want to do. I really love these pendants that Agatha made and I don't want to forget that I would like to try this class. So I just took shots of the class materials and made myself a note reminding myself about it. If you've gotten Polymer Cafe magazine at any point, you might recognize this. This is an article from October 2011 on how to make a ball jointed doll. And what I did, I actually used my phone to snap pictures of each page of the article. And I have them stored here. So not only does this remind me that I have this project that I would like to take, but if anything should happen to my paper magazines, I'll have a record of it here. And when I scroll through my polymer clay play ideas, this might come up as something I want to work on. So what can be in a note? Well, you already saw you can have pictures, you can have text. This is a class from Polymer Clay Adventure 2016 that I never got around to making, but I may want to. You can have videos, but it takes up a lot of space. So what I usually do, if the video is online, I will have a link to it. There was a PDF of the materials in the class, and that's what you're looking at right now was actually the PDF can be saved. You can have documents, you can have audio files, although I'm such a visual person, I don't really do that. I have the videos stored on my computer, so I have a little note here just reminding me of where that video is on my computer, should I want to watch it again and perhaps do the class. So yeah, you can put links, videos, notes, text, as I mentioned before, documents. You can record yourself a little MP3. Anything and all of those things can go into any single note. And you can make checklists. So like if I decided, okay, I'm going to do this class and I'm going to make myself a step-by-step -step checklist. So I'm sure I'll get it done. So I can then list down all of the steps that I need to do to make sure this project gets done. Gather the materials, plan what exactly I'm going to do, schedule a time, and then you can go in and check those off. So it really is a very cool way of storing just any piece of information that you want to save for later. A lot of these are things from classes that I want to remember that I want to make. This is a bunch of ideas that I gathered for a project that I, I'm hoping to do. It's based on a book. If you've read them, you'll recognize them with moonstones and night skies and stars. And just, again, inspiration and ideas. And I'm so very vid visual that... Um, yeah, most of it's just pictures, but you can put whatever works for you in there. So how do you get pictures in there? Well, there's a really cool little plugin for Chrome called the Evernote Web Clipper. And you just download it. You can search for it if you use Chrome as your main browser. And then you click on that little elephant up there. So let's say I'm in Pinterest and I come across an idea that I want to save for inspiration. And I see this dragon painting and I really like the pose. I think it's a cool pose. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to shrink it down a little. You can do that just by hitting function and minus key until it's the size you want. And come back. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to hit that little elephant up there on the upper right. That's the Evernote Web Clipper. 
and then you can give it a meaningful name. Don't worry that it disappears. It just scrolls down on you for some reason lately. And I'm going to explain what I like about it. I like the flowing shape of this dragon. And you can save these things with lots of different ways. If you're saving a recipe or a how-to, you might want to save an article or a simplified article or a full page or just the bookmark. What I usually use is screenshot. And if there's an artist name somewhere on here, it doesn't look like there is. It just looks like the last person to save it. But if it's like another polymer clay artist or a jewelry artist, I'll make sure and get their name in there so I can give credit later on. Evernote does a pretty good job of deciding what category you want it in, but sometimes it gets it way out, way off. So I put it in Dragon Ideas. Hit Save. And you can annotate it. You can crop it. You can add markings, all sorts of things that you can do. So I'm going to hit save. You can also add tags, which I don't use that much because the search feature is just really good. So now we'll go back to Evernote and go to Dragon Ideas and hit sync. And there it is. There's that note that I just created. Now, if you want to add more notes to this, what I usually do is I use the snipping tool. I'll just open up the snipping tool and that will allow you to capture a portion of anything on a screen. And then I'll just paste it into a note. So if I have a note that already has a photo in it, then I'll just use the snipping tool to add more photos. Evernote is also fantastic for keeping inventories. It syncs across all your devices. I have now an iPhone, a tablet, and a laptop, and I love that Evernote actually syncs better than anything I've tried to sync across all my devices, even better than email. It just is beautiful and smooth and neat and tidy. And one thing I have used that for is to sync uh, my sewing patterns. First I have one notebook of sewing patterns that I might like to get someday. Maybe I saw it online in an introductory seasonal list of the new patterns for the spring or summer and I saved them because oh I like this and that way if I'm in the fabric store and they're on sale I can pick one. I also use my phone and snapped photos of all of my patterns so I have my entire pattern inventory on Evernote and I snapped photos of the fronts and the backs of the envelopes so I've got all the information I need, notions, how much fabric for what size. I have it all right there with me wherever I am with my laptop. If I'm out at the store I have my phone. So if I see a piece of fabric that I want to make a jacket out of, I don't have to guess as to how much I need to get. So I love it for that. You can also search. So if I decide, you know, I think I want to make a new dress for the spring, I can search dress and see what patterns I already have. And here's all my dresses, although you might see like men's dress shirts comes out, but that's okay. But it does a really good job of searching and not just words that I typed in. It searches all of the words that are in the images. Now you can look at these in different ways. That was the card view. This is the snippet view. And I love having the preview off to the side, but just so you can get an idea, here's the snippet view. It gives you some words and like it says, just a little snippet. You can also look at a list view with the list on top and your preview below or a list view with the list on the side and the preview to the right. You can change those things around just like you can in any program. My favorite though is the card view and what I like to do is actually move this all the way over so there's only one row of cards showing and then I get a big preview on the right of whatever is in the note. And I'm using my down arrows here actually on my keyboard to scroll through. So if I'm looking for a particular dress, I know there was a dress pattern that I wanted. And you can see on all of these that the word dress is highlighted in all of these, which is really cool. So it shows you your search terms. 
And if I decide, oh, this is the one I want, I want a closer look at that. On my laptop, I can actually grab it, click on the bottom, click on the picture, and then grab the bottom right, and you can make it bigger or smaller as you need. I resize most of these so they actually fit on my screen so I can kind of get an overview picture of the whole thing. So you can do that too. When you take the photos, you can crop them in your phone or in your tablet uh, if you're using that to take the pictures. I didn't on all of these because I added all of these patterns in an afternoon. So I love that. So if you're outside and you see something that you want to take a picture of, you can just snap it with your phone and, and there you go. So just as a reminder, the way Evernote works is you have notes like an individual pattern in a notebook called Sewing Patterns in a stack of notebooks under, in this case, crafting. Now the search on this is fantastic. As I mentioned, not only can it find for you, like I just typed in cup chain, although it kind of read chairs, chain. It highlights for you the search terms that it found, and it found these in the text I typed, as well as in photos I clipped. And not only that, what really amazes me is it actually reads my horrible handwriting. And you can see before I expanded that, that cup chain in my horrible scribbly handwriting was highlighted, which is just amazing. So you can actually have scribbled handwritten notes. Um, I wrote this, I had the, this was how my notes were organized before I had Evernote. I had them on bits of paper and torn out pages from magazines and photocopies. And so I took photos of them all with my phone to put them all into Evernote and have them organized. And it just amazed me that it could read my writing because my writing's pretty bad. Another thing it's really great for is if you have recipes in magazines or patterns or ideas, and maybe there's only one or two in a magazine, you can just use your, again, phone camera or a tablet camera to take a picture. So here's some recipes. And this is a, a recipe from a magazine. Oh, it's January. I'm on a diet, boy. That sounds really good, maple syrup and butter. Oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> but this was the pictures and the text from a magazine. It may have been one that I borrowed from a friend and I wanted to keep the recipe. And so there I have it all in Evernote. Or just to help thin out the books and recipes that you have. How many of us have a cookbook that only has one or two recipes that we use? Or a magazine that you might get that has only a couple things you're going to use out of it. You can just snap them right into Evernote and then you'll be able to find it when you need it. Now you get a small amount of storage for free, but I pay, I think it's $23.50 a year to be able to upload a gigabyte a month, which is more than enough than I need. It's well worth it because I'm always saving ideas because that's kind of what I do. There is a limit to the number of notebooks and notes you can have on a free plan, but so far I haven't even come close to that. And if you want to download it, you just go to evernote.com or if you're using a tablet or your phone, you can just go to the iTunes store or the Google Play store, whichever store, and type in Evernote. and It'll be there with the elephant with the green background, download it, sign up for an account, and then your accounts will all be synced across all of your devices. It's just the coolest thing, and I have found it so useful, again, not just for my crafting, but as you can see for home stuff, uh, for keeping ideas. I even have, you notice, a stack of notebooks called Completed Ideas, which is so useful because then I know what I've done. Sometimes I have an idea that I think is a brilliant idea and then I go and search it and discover, oh look, <laughs> I did that already. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a comment and let me know what you're going to use Evernote for or if you already have it, what you use it for. So here's to Happy New Year and getting our ideas all more organized. Happy creating, bye-bye.